Hi, Selenos, and welcome to Bandbond. Hi, how are you? So it's been 10 years since your debut album with this band, Shadowcast. Uh, did you start writing on After Death immediately after that record was released, or how did you go about it? Oh, uh, well, pretty much from 2011 uh, up until 2016, I think, we uh, were working on and off with new material. Um, so we took it in blocks, basically, and... Uh, uh, so technically, obviously, several of those songs are from uh, uh, yeah, 2011, 2012, 2013, and then we've just been working on them on and off, basically, back and forth. Uh, how did the recording process look like? Well, it was uh, very uh, back to basics, uh, very old school setup. We did uh, the drums ourselves in our uh, rehearsal warehouse, and then we did uh, also the most of the vocals there. But we did guitars and bass at my home studio. Uh, a very simple setup, very old school setup, you know. Uh, and we had uh, extraordinary uh, help and assistance in the mixing process from uh, Russ Russell in. Uh, in parlor recording studios in England. Some bands, you know, like to get away. They record in another town. They record in another country. But what's it like recording at home? <laughs> Isn't it easy to get distracted? You know. For us, it was an upside. Uh, we just knew pretty early on that we could not. Once we had a song finished, pretty much we we had to leave it until we were going to record it. Otherwise, if you go back and forth too much, you end up just scrapping the song all together and you start on scratch and then you'll never get finished. So, uh, and it feels good to finally have these songs out because we've, we've been living with them for a long time, obviously. So it's, it's great to, to have them out of the system now. Uh, what do you get from Insidious Disease that you kind of don't get from Dimi Borger as a person, as, as you, as an artist? Maybe a bit more laid back in the sense that uh, we don't have the same history as Dimu has uh, built up over the years, you know. Um, I would say that uh, there's not that many differences because uh, I feel with both Insidious and Dimu, uh, I don't have anything to prove, you know. It's, it's, it's going about it like this is what we, we like to do. We're a bunch of guys that likes this type of music, putting it together and performing it. And, uh, you know, it's not for everybody. Um, and that's fine. It's, it's not meant to be for everybody. So, uh, and with the stages, especially, we we're not trying to reinvent the wheel, so to speak. So people know that, and it's just um, a bit a less analytical process, I guess, uh, writing songs for insidious. And we obviously don't have any image or anything like that either. So we're we're more of a plug and play band, so to speak. Uh, like I said, it's an all-star band uh, with Dimmu Borger, yourself there, and Morgoth, and Nile, and Napalm Death, and Suspiria. Uh, how did you recruit the members? Well, it it came about, like, I mean, before I started Dimmu, I had a death metal uh, constellation um, back in 91, 92, and we were mostly doing covers and such. But um, basically in 2003, 2004, uh, figured that we should, you know, start making some brutal songs together again. So that's how it initially started. And uh, uh, since Tony was uh, the drummer, he was with us live uh, on Ostfest to Dimmu. So he uh, expressed his interest in, in doing the drums. And, you know, so we already had the basic uh, lineup there. Uh, we just wanted to have a, <clears throat> have a more old school approach on the vocal front, like... Uh, one of the more extreme bands that we grew up with in in the late eighties, uh, early nineties, you know, so and that type of screeching vocals. So that's how Mark came into the picture, and uh, and I've been friends with Shane for many years, and uh, despite him having so many other projects and bands, uh, he uh, he was still into doing it. So yeah. <laughs> One thing you should be really, really pleased about is the cover. Uh, Dan Seagrave, the legendary cover artist, resembles a mixture of something from ancient Egypt to Lord of the Rings. Uh, how involved were you in the idea of the of the album concept for the cover? Well, we uh, we gave him the uh, the songs, the lyric uh, themes, and and some of the ideas that we had, you know. Um, like we wanted to have earthly colors and stuff like that. So 
uh, and the initial sketch that he he sent us was like, okay, uh, that was just by pencil, and I could just already tell that it's going to be something really, really cool, you know, that actually fits the the album title and all that stuff. So, and it was it's like a dream. <laughs>